A Romance in Encyclopedia Land by Robert C. Benchley. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Reading by Matt Perard. A Romance in Encyclopedia Land by Robert C. Benchley. Written after three hours browsing in a new Britannica set. Picture to yourself an early spring afternoon along the banks of the river A, which, rising in the Teutoburger Wald, joins the Ver at Herford and is navigable as far as St. Omer. Branching Bryophytu spread their flat, dorsiventral bodies, closely applied to the substratum on which they grew, and leafy carophyllaceae twined their sepals in prodigal profusion, lending a touch of color to the scene. It was clear that nature was in preparation for her estivation, but it was not this which attracted the eye of the young man who, walking along the phonolithic formation of the river bank, was playing softly to himself on a double curtail or converted bass palmer, an octave below the single curtail and therefore identical in pitch and construction with an early fagato in C. His mind was on other things. He was evidently of melanochronic extraction, with a pentagonal facial angle and strong orbital ridges, but he combined with this the fine lines of a full-blooded native of Col, where, indeed, he was born, seven miles west of Kaliak Point in Mull, and in full view of the rugged Nice. As he swung along, there throbbed again and again through his brain the beautiful opening paragraph of Frontisek Palakis, 1798-1876, Zur Bonmischen Geschichtsschreibung, Prague, 1871 written just after the author had refused a portfolio in the Pillersdorf cabinet, and had also declined to take part in the preliminary diet at Kromatschi. If he could believe such things, why cannot I? murmured the young man, and crushed a ginkgo beneath his feet. Young men are often so. It is due to the elaterium of spring. By Erishkigal, he swore, softly to himself i'll do it no sooner had he spoken than he came suddenly out of the tangle of gymnosperms through whose leaves needle-like and destitute of oil glands as they were he had been making his way and emerged to a full view of the broad sweep of the lake of zug just where the lores enters at its northern extremity and one and a quarter miles east of where it issues again to pursue its course toward the Ross. Zug, at this point, is 1,368 feet above sea level, and boasted its first steamer in 1852. Well, he sighed, as he gazed upon the broad area of subsidence, if I were now an exarch, whose dignity was, at one time, intermediate, between the patriarchal and the metropolitan, and from whose name has come that of the political religious party, the exarchists. I should not be here daydreaming. I should be far away in Footscray, a city of Bork County, Victoria, Australia, population, 1901, 18,301. And as he said this, his eyes filled with tears, and under his skin, brown as a fustic, there spread a faint flush, such as is often formed by citricide or by pyrochloric acid when acting on uncured leather. Far down in the valley, the natives were celebrating the birthday of Gambrinus, a mythical Flemish king who is credited with the first brewing of beer. The sound of their voices set in motion longitudinal sound waves, and these, traveling through the surrounding medium, met the surface, separating two media, and were in part reflected, traveling back from the surface into the first medium again, with the velocity 
with which they approached it, as depicted in figure 10. This caused the echo for which the Lake of Zug is justly famous. The twilight began to deepen, and from far above came the twinkling signals of first Boots, then Coma Berenices, followed a while later by Ursa Major and her little brother Ursa Minor. The stars are clear tonight, he sighed. I wonder if they are visible from the dacite elevation on which she lives. His was an untrained mind. His only school had been the Eleatic school, the contention of which was that the true explanation of things lies in the conception of a universal unity of being, or the allness of one. But he knew what he liked. In the calm light of the stars he felt as if a uban had been lifted from his heart, five ubans being equal to one quat, six quats to one amat, and one hundred and twenty amats to one sauce. He was free again. Turning, he walked swiftly down into the valley, passing returning peasants with their ba poots, and soon came in sight of the shining lamps of the small but carefully built puros which lined the road. Reaching the corner, he saw the village epi peering over the treetops, and swarms of cicada with the toothed femoras of their anterior legs mingling in a sleepy drone like many cichlids. It was all very homelike to the wanderer. Suddenly there appeared on a neighboring eminence a party of gussards, such as, during the Saturnalia, and from the Nativity till the Epiphany, were accustomed to disport themselves in odd costumes, all clad in clouting, and evidently returning from taking part in the celebration. As they drew nearer, our hero noticed a young woman in the front rank who was playing folk songs on a cromorn with a double reed mouthpiece enclosed in an air reservoir. In spite of the detritus wrought by the festival, there was something familiar about the buccinator of her face and her little mannerism of elevating her second phalanx. It struck him like the flash of a cloud highly charged by the coalescence of drops of vapor. He approached her tenderly, reverently. Lang, and Francois Elizabeth, he said, I know you. You are a French actress, born in Genoa on the 17th of September, 1772, and you made your first appearance on the stage in Le Cossais in 1788. Your talent and your beauty gave you an enormous success in Pamela. It has taken me years to find you, but now we are united at last. The girl turned like a frightened aardvark, still holding the cromorn in her hand. Then she smiled. Weenix, Barnaby, Bernard, 1777 to 1829, she said very slowly. You started business as a publisher in London about 1797. They looked at each other for a moment in silence. He was the first to speak. Miss Lang, Anne, he said, let us go together to Lar and be happy there, happy as two eyes, or three-toed South American sloths. She lowered her eyes. I will go with you, Mr. Weenix Barney, she said, to the ends of the earth. But why to Lar? Why not to Wem? Because, said the young man, Lar is the capital of Laristan, in twenty-seven degrees thirty minutes north, one hundred eighty miles from Shiraz, and contains an old bazaar consisting of four arcades, each a hundred and eighty feet long. Their eyes met, and she placed her hands in his. And, from the woods, came the mellow whinnying of a herd of vip, the wool of which is highly valued for weaving. End of a Romance in Encyclopedia Land by Robert C. Benchley